I lost over $50,000 trying to flip a house. I know that sounds crazy, but it was honestly one of the best decisions I ever made. What's going on guys? My name is Jaime Behar and today we're going to be talking about in detail what exactly happened with that house flip. So a couple of videos back, I kind of told you guys my whole story with entrepreneurship, everything from a coffee company to flipping houses to clothing line, a tax business. I've done all kinds of stuff. Let's get into the actual details of what happened with that house flip. Like how did I almost lose that amount of money or did I actually lose it? I think it was somewhere around 2016, 2017, and I was just getting my first real taste of e-commerce, at least I would say. And luckily one of my really good friends, Adams, is the one that you know brought me into the business. It was already kind of his idea, his vision. He had already been doing coffee, selling, different types of businesses like that. And I was like, you know what? It's a really great idea. Like, why not do it? So I jumped in, right? Anyways, fast forward past all that. 2017 comes around, 2018, and I'm like, all right, well, that didn't really work out. So, so what am I gonna do? On to the next thing, right? So then at that moment, I was pondering, like, should I really be doing something? Should I just get another job? Like, what exactly should I be doing, right? So then at the time, I was like, you know what? Maybe I should take a break. Maybe I should just buy a house. For sure, I'll build some equity there, right? At that moment, I can feel I was already starting to actually give up. Literally, I was like, if you really think about the logic behind what I was thinking and how I was thinking, it was basically me giving up because I was already thinking like, oh, you know, let me buy a house. I'm going to get equity. In the long run, things are going to work out. It's going to get paid off. Kind of like a safety net is really what it was, right? I was lying to myself by telling myself, oh, I'm going to make money doing that. But in reality, it was more of my safety net. So we figured it out, right? We're like, all right, well, how are we going to get this house? What do we got to do? So I started hitting a whole bunch of people that I know in real estate. Some of my really good friends who was actually a real estate agent who helped me get the house. I hit him up. I hit a whole bunch of people up and we ended up buying this house. Obviously did not have to put in a ton of money down. So that was super easy. That made it a lot more comfortable to be able to get into the house. So we buy the house, complete disaster. I'm telling you right now, from the minute we bought that house, I was like, I shouldn't be buying this. It doesn't sound like a great idea. But my wife kept insisting like, you know, let's get it. We're going to fix it up. I felt like she was seeing the future or something, right? So then we ended up getting the house and at the time I was like okay well what are we gonna do right like are we gonna fix it how do we fix this just so you guys kind of know my background I don't even know how to use a hammer like just the thought of using a hammer and getting a nail just gets through my nerves and I was like all right well I guess we'll figure it out right we're gonna save some money we're gonna get in there we're gonna paint it we're gonna break everything down so that's what we start doing usually I think about one to three months in we start tearing things down start tearing down the walls start hammering things down I get trash bins I get some of my friends to start helping we probably do this for about a few weeks and then I realized I'm like, okay, well, maybe I shouldn't be doing this, right? I'm like, this seems like it's gonna take a long time and I have no idea what I'm doing. Straight up, I don't know what I was doing. So then at some moment we realized, okay, maybe, maybe we should hire contractors or maybe we should help hire individual people that can help us fix things, right? Maybe a painter, maybe an electrician, a gardener. I don't know, right? We're like, okay, let's just kind of go with it. I think the first person we hired was probably an electrician. I don't know anything about electricity, just so you guys know. We hire them, they start kind of working on that. And while they're doing that, me and my wife are still wondering like, okay, well, what are we gonna do? Like, is this really the way it's gonna happen? It seems like it's going really, really slow. I don't think it should be taking this long. Somehow she finds this seminar are basically helping you and teaching you how to flip real estate, right? That's all it was. It was something to do with real estate. Honestly, I don't even remember what it was. Point is, she signs us up. It was a free weekend. Honestly, I was kind of hesitant about going. I was, I thought my wife was crazy, but I was like, all right, let's go. It's free, right? We go. Sure enough, I learned a ton of stuff and nothing to do with flipping real estate, but it has something to do with tax impounds and real estate and how you can basically take over real estate properties with them. People don't pay their taxes. And from there is when the story really begins, right? Because you guys know how seminars work, right? That's kind of how they get you. You go in for free. And they sell you a weekend thing and they send you a mastermind and you don't even imagine where that went. So we end up signing for a three-day event, which was like two or thirty grand. Keep in mind, I'm still broke at that time. I'm still pulling money out of God knows where and pay for the weekend, start learning things the first day. First day was pretty good. But right away, the first day, they already start hinting at these tire tier coaching programs that they have, right? And sure enough, by the second day, that's all they were talking about. I felt like I could have learned what they taught me in an hour by somebody else, right? Or even looked it up online, honestly, for the amount of money that we paid to the point where where they started pushing this coaching program where it would be one-on-one -on -one, that was forty thousand dollars and i was like there is no way i'm gonna pay for this right but somewhere deep down in there i kind of wanted to pay they had me they had me in the hook like i was really ready to pay and you know me and wife talked about it we're like let's go home we went home on saturday we're gonna come back sunday still kind of debating back and forth luckily we did not do it could it have been good i don't know could it have been bad i don't know i'm sure we would have learned more forty thousand dollars worth i don't know the way 
expectations. That weekend went, that was two, three thousand dollars. I was already super skeptical about the amount of volume of things that they were teaching us. If it was that minimal and all they were doing is coaching us at higher level things, then what would it be like if we paid forty thousand dollars, right? There's probably something higher than that. We ended up not doing it. Somehow, I don't know if it was my wife or me at that time after the weekend was over, and this is how I actually met Ryan Pineda. So I know you guys know exactly who that is. You guys can look him up. Ryan's amazing, super knowledgeable in business. He runs multiple seven, eight figure companies. At the time, I think he had already probably cracked multiple seven figures. He was already doing pretty good. He was still a lot younger in entrepreneurship versus what he is doing today. But somehow we found him. I think I was following somebody who was following somebody who just, I ended up in his page and I just felt really good vibe. He hadn't even started promoting social media at that time. This was again, like 2018 or something. And he was promoting his first ever in-person real estate coaching program. So we were like, you know what? It's $3,000 again. It's in Vegas. Let's go, right? So we ended up paying for it. We drive down to Vegas and honestly, it was by far significantly better than the two, $3,000 we paid for the other seminar, right? And I felt like after we went through that weekend, not only did we build that relationship with him, that till this day, we have a relationship, which is really great, but I learned a ton. Right at that moment after I finished the course, me and my wife finished that coaching program, we were like, okay, we know exactly what we gotta do. So what do we do? Well, we hire a contractor. We're like, well, we should have just done that from the beginning, right? Keep in mind what I said at the beginning. We originally bought the house to live in it, right? We were just gonna fix it. We were gonna live in it. We was gonna build up equity. I don't know what I was doing though. Neither one of us knew what we were doing, right? We thought we bought it at a decent price. We thought if you just add all this value in, the price will automatically go up. It doesn't work that way, right? And there's nobody willing to buy it. And there's nobody willing to pay top dollar for it. And nobody's gonna buy it. And obviously, if any of you guys know wholesale real estate, flipping real estate, you really gotta get these properties at a heavily discount price. That is where you're making the money. If a house normally goes for $500,000 in a certain area and you buy it for 480, chances of you making money are gonna be very minimal. But if you buy it at 400,000, you probably make some money, right? Maybe put in $50,000 worth, sell it at 500, you could probably make five to twenty thousand dollars obviously in our situation we bought a house for about 480 at the time i think that was already the average i was already like on the, at the tip of it so even if we poured all this money into it were we gonna make money well we didn't really know yet at the time right so we hired this contractor keep in mind i'm still broke i don't know what i was doing honestly at that time i, I was just pretty much like how much worse can it be right so we hire a contractor well it turns out the house was so bad this project ended up costing us anywhere between 60 to eighty thousand dollars where was i gonna get that money from right i was only making $50,000 per year. My wife was probably making somewhere around the same. Where were we going to pull out another $80,000? Well, this is where my parents come in. I actually ended up maximizing their line of credit, literally maxed it out. And you know, we bought the house, the down payment, contractors, like literally maxed out the entire line of credit. If I didn't have my parents, if that line of credit was not there, I probably would have not have done it because I don't know where I would have gotten the money from. But long story short, we end up flipping the house. We run out of money, like literally run out of money. I think we still needed like another 10 to $20,000 to finish fixing the house. And I was like, like, you know what? Maybe we should sell it, right? So obviously when we're taking this course with Ryan, that's the first time we really saw like, you know, we can actually make some money from this. At least so we thought. But obviously we end up fixing the house, we're trying to sell it, and we went, end up realizing that there's actually no market for it. At the time, the market was still starting to barely creep up. I think this was right before 2020, right before the COVID crash, 2019, 2018 again. Market was creeping up, market was not low, but it's not what it was today. So I think at the time, I was trying to, we were trying to figure out what we were gonna do, right? And to kind of give you guys some extra story in between from beginning to end of that flip it wasn't just that easy right i didn't just go to a seminar a second seminar pull some money from my parents line of credit hired a contractor oh and boom the house was fixed there was so much stress literally going through that entire three to four month process like it was one of the most stressful times of our lives like during that time we had actually moved out of our apartment we were trying to save money we moved into my parents house while flipping this property right my parents actually converted their garage into a den you can basically call it we we're literally living in that damn while the house was being flipped and that as you can imagine this is not the easiest right maybe if you're single obviously you just got to do what you got to do but when you're married and you have a kid you're barely making ends meet you're trying to become an entrepreneur like it was just crazy right that in itself and guess what we had all our stuff in this house that we were flipping because again keep in mind we were going to move into it it was never meant to be flipped do you guys know what is the most common thing that happens when you're trying to flip a house people actually break into it that is very very common which at the time i had no idea and guess what happens people break in they steal all my wife's jewelry they steal some of our other belongings and honestly that was pretty devastating that was just like another note to the coffin it was just another like what else can go wrong what else is it going to take to actually break through right so there was a lot of little things like that happening throughout that process as well which as you guys can imagine did not make it easy at the end of the day we end up flipping the house we pour all this money into it we borrow the money and then guess what again we're trying to sell the house and we realize we're actually going to lose money literally lose money if we would have sold the house at that time which ryan actually suggested right because keep in mind that was the only thing i was doing and he was like hey if you're really going to stick to it you obviously need capital if you sell the house you're going to get a lot of that
that capital back. Yes, you are going to lose money, but you're going to get that capital back to be, to be able to redo it again. I was going to lose somewhere between thirty to fifty thousand dollars, and that just did not sit well with me. I was just like, there's just no way. Like it's, this does not make any sense. I think I did the right decision. I ended up not selling the house. I ended up keeping it, and I was like, you know what? There's no way that I can do this. I'm going to rent out the house. Going to let it pay off itself. I need to figure something else out. So then, wholesale real estate is born, right? I get into wholesale real estate, and sure enough, I quit about two months later because there's just no way that I can do it. Long story short, that's basically my entire real estate career. I would say that was probably somewhere between six to nine months, like really just all in real estate. I will say this though, I think I made an amazing decision by not selling that property because that property currently has over a quarter million dollars in equity that it would not have had if I would have sold that property. They still have it, still being rented out by the same tenants. How amazing is that? Almost four years, the same tenants never missed the payment and there's over a quarter million in equity. I think I did a pretty good decision by keeping the property, but that was pretty much the end of real estate for me. Since then, I have not been involved in real estate. I do plan to heavily get involved in real estate in the future, buy a couple of properties here and there, but I am more of an e-commerce crypto person. That is where most of my money is invested. That is where I continue to invest my money and start more companies within that. Real estate at the end of the day is one of the best assets to own. It has been proven itself for hundreds and hundreds of years. There is the most millionaires out there have been born from real estate. And that's just the fact. But for me, I love real estate. It's amazing. That is not how I plan to make my money. I plan to do it through e-commerce, educational, coaching, crypto. That, that is what I really love. Options, stock trading, stock investing. I love Warren Buffett. That, that is really where my core is at. That is really where my love is at. And that's what I'm going to continue to do. Regardless, that was a pretty crazy story though. I'm not going to lie. It was super stressful. I look back to it and I just laugh because one thing you guys are going to realize through entrepreneurship, through all these different things that you do, it's going to be hard. It's going to be tough. You're going to want to cry. I cried a lot, right? There's going to be all these different events. But once you finally crack through, you're going to look back at those and you're just going to laugh at it. Like, this is going to be so funny. It's going to be amazing. Regardless, I hope this story inspires you guys to not give up. I hope this story reminds you guys of whatever you're doing. It's okay if you're failing. It's okay if you lose it all. As long as you don't stop and as long as you continue going, you're going to make it work. Thank you guys again for tuning into my channel. I'll see you guys in the next video.